The video of Derek Chauvin with his knee on George Floyd's neck while Floyd besieged Chauvin to let him go, saying, I can't breathe, became a powerful rallying call for many around the world to campaign for civil rights, racial equity, and police reform. What was that Facebook post with the hashtag police brutality drew millions of views and was shared countless number of times across various social media platforms. This video provided a much needed window into one of the most atrocious forms of the abuse of authority, which is a recurring reality for many in America. This video, ladies and gentlemen, was not taken by a journalist who reports the news for a living, nor was it taken by a political advocate with a podcast that earns billions in advertising revenue each week. Rather, Darnella Frazier was just a regular high schooler, a youth like you and I. Yet her decision to report the news when she saw something going on in her community, an act of injustice, helped ensure that those responsible for that act of injustice could be brought to justice and that billions around the world could be mobilized to demand much needed change. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of citizen journalism. With the advent of the internet, the amount of time it takes for people across the world to communicate with each other has fallen by a significant degree. And this technological progress has benefited our social life. No longer is borders a barrier with friends and families. We are able to talk with them no matter how far they live from us in an instant. At the same time, this technological progress, ladies and gentlemen, has empowered powerful vehicles of social change, shedding light on some of the key issues facing humanity, climate change, systemic racism, human rights abuse, and war crimes. One such vehicle is citizen journalism. But what is citizen journalism? To best understand this, we must first compare it with traditional journalism. In the traditional way of news production, one can observe a hierarchical relationship where you have the news outlet on top with its reporters, editors, and managers, and at the bottom, the lower end, you have the consumer who receives the news. The reporters in the tra archetypal traditional outlet act as the mouth of the funnel. They take in the news and then they start writing reports, which they then file in to the editors. The editors act, act as filters for the outlet. They take in the news that the reporters submit and they edit those reports, those raw reports for compliance with the outlet's style guide, the outlet's policies. But who decides these policies and um, style guides? It's the outlet's management, and the outlet's management is bound by pressures that come in the form of vested interests, such as advertisers, corporate sponsors, or governments themselves. And as Noam Chomsky best describes this in his extensive study of the media, Manufacturing Consent, these interests act as filters through the editors by extracting what they see as troublesome or unnecessary elements of the news, resulting in the public receiving an often filtered version of the news lacking elements that were originally present in the raw reports journalists received and transmitted to the editors. Citizen journalism, by contrast, compensates for a lot of things that is lacking in traditional journalism. Uh, for starters, the relationship between the receivers and transmitters of information in citizen journalism is a horizontal relationship. There is no top-down structure where someone from a position of authority dispenses news. Rather, every single person who receives and transmits citizen journalism is part of a network where each equal node both receives and transmits information. And citizen journalism takes place 
using some of the common tools we use to communicate with each other. And these are WhatsApp groups, um, Telegram channels, and also um, Instagram posts and stories. And where citizen journalism tends to be more popular is in countries where there are no freedom of press or where there is a nominal freedom of press, but at the same time, there are structural limitations preventing its free exercise by the general public. And in those countries, citizens fed up with what they see as wishy-washy government-compliant reporting resort to telling the news themselves. They share, report, and analyze information by themselves through, as I mentioned earlier, common me means of communication. And citizens, other citizens in those countries sharing the same frustration citizen reporters have with the status quo of media in the country, view these citizen reporters as more accurate than government compliant reporters. One such example of this phenomenon is Egypt and other MENA countries during the Arab Spring when authorities began to crack down on media coverage of the demonstrations and the government response by directly or indirectly pressuring outlets to report a certain way, citizens took the responsibility of conveying timely and accurate updates upon themselves by reporting and taking pictures and videos of what was going on in their neighborhoods, in the demonstrations they were exposed to, and how governments responded to those demonstrations and thanks to their reporting mainstream media got a lot of key information from them that were missing and by mainstream I mean international media that were missing in local reporting due to government direct or indirect censorship in fact a lot of key stories in the Arab Spring were not broken by both local and international outlets first, but by citizen reporters themselves who saw these events happening in their neighborhoods, in their cities, live. And if it was not for them, we would not have much of the primary sources of information we have of the spring. And their reports also had a large impact because a lot of investigation into the conduct of authorities happened because or were made possible because of the reporting by these citizen journalists and an example a brilliant example that i can give you of this is the investigation into an instant where an egyptian tank was seen firing upon a school this investigation was made possible because there was a citizen reporter nearby who recorded this incident. And there are a lot of examples that attest to um, similar um, investigations that happened because of citizen journalists. Now, one of the most important things that citizen journalist, uh, journalism contributes to the global conversation is that it provides a layman's perspective of things, a first-person view of things, which is not um, often seen in traditional media where you have this third-party um, journalist that drops in when something is going on in a country, city, or town, or state. Gaza provides an excellent example. In times of peace, through the TikToks, Twitter threads, and Snapchat stories, we get to see the lives and suffering of the people living there in a territory beleaguered by economic blockades. And in times of war, we get to see the fear and terror people have as buildings, schools, mosques, resorts nearby get demolished and flattened by relentless bombing campaigns. Now, one might say citizen journalism is biased or it has it is emotional, but that is the point. Too often, mainstream media is bound by the need to provide a gist of things. Now, what ends up happening is that in the generalization process that follows, and the generalization process being imbued with selection bias, the news is often written off from its emotional content. 
and the result is callous reporting. And this is because in mainstream media, emotions are seen as something that compromises objectivity, though in recent uh, years, outlets are moving, from, moving away from that um, paradigm. Uh, emotions provide necessary context, and that is something outlets, a majority of traditional outlets fail to realize. And for the amount of emotional content lacking in traditional media, citizen journalism provides it. Because as I mentioned earlier, we are able to see and experience things as people see, feel, and experience it themselves because the people reporting the story are just ordinary people who have their worries, concerns, and day-to-day -day lives to think about. And because they are on an equal footing with us in terms of status, they are not journalists whose sole job is to report the news. Rather, they are people like us who have their job, children, family to worry about. Because these are people on a similar footing with us reporting the news, we get to empathize with their, uh, with their situation better through their reports. And besides this, another way citizen journalism has contributed or and has ha had an impact on the global conversation is that it helps us understand the gravity of some things that are systemic, like systemic racism or, or some things that are that tend to be skimmed over in broad generalizations in traditional reporting such as abuse and so on. An example of this is the Me Too movement. And before the Me Too movement, no one really anticipated the amount of uh, injustices and crimes going on in the upper echelons of society. Yes, there were some instances reported, but those were reported because, and people were able to see them because the things that happened were too uh, obvious to be denied. But thanks to the report, uh, to the um, to people who are affected speaking out, and f um, we got to know about this widespread injustice and abuse going on in the top tiers of society. And besides the work of brave survivors who spoke out, it was act it was also the the honest and relentless work of citizen journalists, ordinary people, interns who have seen things happen, who took the courage to report those things through social media platforms help and in their reports they made sure to include the emotions of someone who's seeing this thing and someone who's having who's facing these crimes and because of that by looking at several individual reports together people were able to empathize to see the human faces behind what news reports describe as a general trend And collectively, these people, these citizen reporters, along with the survivors, have helped expose something that is a widespread social evil plaguing our society. Now, just like these brave individuals and people that I have discussed in my examples, you need not be a bystander when injustices happen around you. You can contribute a great number of essential reporting to the global conversation by reporting on the injustices, systemic racism, and so on that is going on in your community, in your places of worship, in your school, and in your colleges. Now, you may think that the story you have to share might not be important, but that very thing that you consider as not important enough can lead to an important global conversation can shed light on something that has been going on but people have not noticed and it can also provide a voice to something people have been facing but have not had the courage to say it out loud by reporting these things you have the power to make an impact by providing something that could call for demonstrations to demand much needed change. This is the power of citizen journalism, and I encourage each and every one of you to exercise it yourselves to the full degree possible. 
Thank you.